Hey guys, this is Slyman. In today's video, we'll be looking at the Celestron Advanced VX 8 inch Newtonian Telescope, aka the Beast. Just to go over the features of the Advanced VX 8 inch Newtonian, real quick, has a focal length of 1000 millimeters, an aperture of 200 millimeters or 8 inches. The tube weighs 14 pounds, tripod weighs 18 pounds, the entire thing weighs 71 pounds. It is heavy. You get two counterweights and they are 11 pounds each. And then obviously you're going to get yourself a nice advanced VX mount with that, with all the features of the advanced VX, with the, the better motors for the, the weight imbalances, the periodic error correction, and all those awesome features. All right, so here you have the focuser. And the focuser is huge. I can't even get my whole hand around it. Uh, you have a 1.25 inch adapter that comes on there that will unscrew and you can attach your DSLR right away. Start imaging, you have an equatorial mount, I mean you're good to go with the DSLR. Just have a T-ring, screw it on, and you're ready to go. A great thing about the 8 inch Newtonian is you can unscrew the base thumb rings here and remove that and put in the included 2 inch eyepiece adapter. Just drop that in, lock it in place, and now you have room for mammoth eyepieces, 2 inch eyepieces. This focusing unit is just massive. You have a lock up here to lock the focuser down for when you're ready. It will focus a DSLR, 2 inch eyepieces and 1.25 inch eyepieces. If I could recommend anything in astronomy, it'd be 2 inch eyepieces. They are awesome, but they are also very, very expensive. The objective weighs a lot, but it's actually pretty nice. It's a 9 by 50, so 9 times magnification, with a 50 millimeter objective or 2 inches on there. So about the same size as the adapter. Looking down the uh, optical tube assembly, you have a massive 8 inch mirror at the back here. Obviously you have uh, these spider veins that are going to hold your secondary in place. So the light will come down, reflect off your secondary, and back up to your focuser. And uh, you can see that the, the mirror is, well I guess you can't really see, but it is a massive mirror. 8 inches, 87% more light gathering power than a 6 inch mirror. Awesome and huge. Here you have your clutches. They're a bit gummy. Not a big fan of them. I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. Just move your scope around with those, then lock them in place. Now I'm not the biggest fan of the clutches. Normally when you undo a clutch on an equatorial mount, weight imbalance issues will become pretty obvious. But the, the advanced VX, I just undid the clutch and you can see it didn't move at all. So either I'm in balance or the it's just not very smooth. The clutches aren't the smoothest. I'll undo the declination here. If there's any imbalance on a normal equatorial, it'd move right away. I can tell there's some imbalance here, but when I let go, it doesn't move. So you have to move it on your own to find the imbalances and fix those. So it can be a little bit annoying, but it's really not that big of a deal. Something else that I really like about the Advanced VX mount is it handles weight imbalances really well. Uh, it's only advertised as holding a 30 pound max capacity. This is only a 14 pound optical tube, um, but for astrophotography, astrophotography, you only want to be at about 50% of your maximum weight, which would be 15 pounds. But the Advanced VX does a really good job of handling those weight imbalances. So you can put this tube on here, probably an auto guider and a DSLR, and you still should be just fine for imaging as long as you're really balanced um, and in good balance. So I wish, I wish the Advanced VX held more, but that's why it's uh, so cheap, is it is a, a 30 pound mount, but it is still awesome in that it has periodic error correction, a four, uh, Nexstar Plus hand controller with 40,000 objects in it, and uh, just it's just a solid mount. All right, so here we have our mount adjustment controls. You have your azimuthal controls here, just screwing in one and it backing off the other will move your mount uh, in azimuth left and right. And then you also have your elevation, um, your elevation controls here. So backing one off and then screwing the other will lift. Screwing in the other and backing off the other will lower it. And that's what you will use for your polar alignment. 
The Advanced VX features two auxiliary ports if you'd like to put in a GPS or a SkySync. Then you have a hand controller port here for your hand control and an auto guider port. And then you also have a declination port. This just connects to the deck motor up here and that will allow your telescope to move in declination. So always keep that connected, at least I do. The Advanced VX features your standard Dove's Hill mounting system, so you can mount a variety of you know, Cassegrains, Newtonians, or Fractors on here if they have your typical ring and dovetail bar. And obviously your declination will just move that around. To power the mount, you're going to want to make sure to use a 5 amp AC adapter or the DC or the uh, the adapter that comes with your your telescope, which is just a, like a uh, cigarette lighter adapter or something that you'd plug into a 12 volt DC battery pack. Especially for the 8 inch Newtonian, you're going to want the 5 amp AC adapter to power this guy because it is a big telescope. To power the telescope, we're going to insert our AC adapter as high up as we can and push on it, then screw in the locking nut here. That way if you trip on it or whatnot, you'll still be okay. To begin alignment, make sure that your index marks are aligned. Un undo your clutch and then just tighten that up. And make sure you do that for declination as well. Now go ahead and flick it on. Your hand control will light up. It'll say Advanced yet VX, press enter to begin the alignment. You have a series of choices. It will tell you you can either do a two star alignment or a, a uh, solar system alignment. And what's great about the two star alignment is it actually points into the area of the stars based on your location and what time you put in and whatnot. So you'll actually be pretty close to your alignment stars right from the get go. And then I always put in four extra calibration stars before I begin my all-star polar align. So I'm just gonna do a fake alignment here and you can see if I align to Capella, it will move automatically towards it. I don't have to slew it. I'm just gonna take you real quick through some of the menus here. We have the solar system menu, shows up Jupiter, Uranus, the moon, uh, Mars would come up eventually. You have the stars, constellations, double stars, name stars, SAO, variable stars, asterisms, you have deep sky named objects, the new general catalog, a bell, Caldwell, CCD objects, IC, Messier. Um, then you have your identify button down below. You have a sky tour, you have scroll, motor speeds, um, a menu. And that's what I would like to get into because the Nexstar Plus controller has 40,000 objects in it. Um, but compared to the Nexstar SE series, you get some additional features. You get a let's see, PEC, which is um, periodic error correction. I actually believe that is under utilities. And PEC. And so you get periodic error correction with the advanced VX mount. That's, that's pretty awesome. Basically what that does is it records the play in your gears and then after it records it will it will figure out how it needs to adjust to compensate for that, give you a better, a better tracking. Then you can obviously change your tracking rates, your modes, how you want to do that. Um, so that's just the hand controller. You see with that five amp adapter, you really get some power and it will, it will move that telescope. You can expect visually from the telescope 
incredible views. The moon is awesome. Very, very crisp with an 8-inch mirror. The resolution is really good. If you look at it with a half moon, oh man, you're going to see some awesome, awesome shadows. Just like you're in orbit. I mean, it is crystal clear. Jupiter looks fantastic. Uh, Mars is really good. I was looking at the double cluster the other night and it just, just took my breath away. It is beautiful. Uh, the Pleiades are fantastic. If you use a, a, a wide, field, uh, wide field eyepiece, like a 2 inch eyepiece. Um, the Orion Nebula, oh, just, just awesome. Incredible, incredible views out of an 8 inch Newtonian. And then you get the diffraction spikes too in the stars, those little X's from the, uh, the spider veins in the telescope. Imaging is another fantastic adventure for you. Um, that's probably the main reason why people buy equatorial mounts is, is for imaging. And a DSLR does a, a great job on here. Um, I haven't found a coma corrector that I can use for it yet, but you do get a little bit of coma at the fields of view, or at the edges of the fields of view. It doesn't really bother me though, but uh, you get some really, really good shots. And actually tonight, I'm going to go out and image with this. So, I mean, it, it gets a lot of use and I really, really enjoy the 8 inch Newtonian. It is $300 extra, but to me, it was definitely worth it. I think one of the strongest points around the Advanced VX mount is the equatorial head. This is very, very well machined. It's really solid, pretty heavy, very high quality, heavy duty. And uh, that is, you know, the meat and guts of the Advanced VX mount is in that equatorial head. So that's good that it, it is made uh, very quality like. You can remove the front logo here and the, the back will unscrew if you want to. It's pretty weak plastic, so I don't really tend to do it. I just leave them where they're at. The clutches are a little bit gummy, like I said, but overall the Advanced VX equatorial head is just, it's, it's a great head. All right, well that's my review of the Celestron Advanced VX 8-inch Newtonian telescope. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one, guys.